Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here again with another Vectorworks and Twin Motion video. Now today we're going to look at taking the model that we uh, made yesterday by importing some plants from BIM Object, how we did the symbols and so on. What we're going to do is we're going to take those into the Twin Motion software and show you how you can build your libraries in Twin Motion, both from Vectorworks but also natively with a few other objects as well, and build out your user library objects. So let's get straight into this. Okay, good. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to File, go to Export. There's actually now two uh, file formats we can use on the latest Vectorworks. We can use the Datasmith Direct Export, but I'm going to just go for the tried and tested Cinema 4D that I've been using for a little while here. Um, everything is okay here, apart from we don't really need the planar objects if we have any. That's things like dimensions and stuff. Let's just go ahead and do the export and I'll just click and save over the one that I've just done before. Fantastic. Okay, good. So that's the Vectorworks part done. Let's now hop into Twin Motion and see how that looks. Um, we've just created a very sort of basic sample scene here. Um, nothing in it really apart from a landscape and a background. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the import button, click import, and as ever, we're going to go and open our file we just exported. So let's see if we can kind of locate that. Just make sure we've got it to the right spot. There it is. Um, you'll notice that here is the file that was exported from Vector. It's pretty small, it's only three megabytes or so. And all the textures that are required are in here as well, hopefully. So let's click open. Um, basically, let's go to here and do keep hierarchy. This is really important. I've talked about this before, but this means the models will be far more editable when they uh, land in Twinmotion if needed. So let's click OK. And then you often see that nothing, you know, nothing appears. So a little tip here, just click over to the model over there and just click F to fit. Um, and that will kind of help you find your model. Okay, great. So let's slow down the motion a bit here. And you can see they've actually come in pretty nicely. So I'm actually really, really pleased with that. Now, a really important little tip is um, always you find the either the ground is too low or the model floating. So you can actually click onto the ground. You'll notice it is down at 0 0.04. So if I just want to bring the ground up, I'll make that zero. Okay, and actually in reality, what you normally want to do is just drop it down, say 0.1, just so it's just below the surface. Or you could actually take the model and drop that down as well. Let's do it that way. Okay, that's good. Um, another thing that I've noticed uh, a lot from most software that comes in, both SketchUp or Vectorworks, is that the textures are there. So when you click T for the texture tool, for the eyedropper, um, you'll click on the texture and it will come through. But what I've found is they always come out really washed out. So you're going to kind of want to slide this down to just bring out the grain of that texture a little bit more. Um, depending on how far you want to go and the lighting conditions, probably about halfway seems about right to me. Um, while I'm here though, a couple of extra little tricks is go to the More button um, and introduce maybe like a bit of the grunge. That's quite nice. Can you see a bit of kind of grunge coming into the model just to make it look a bit more realistic? Anyway, we're getting distracted. We were talking about creating the plant libraries. So what we can find is if we click 5 for our selection tool, we can click on these individual models and we can kind of move them around. So that's cool. But what's really nice is each one is its own entity. So we can right click now to actually start forming our libraries directly in Twin Motion. Now, I've shown you this before, but let's know how I'm doing this again. We go to Add to User Library. Okay, and what that will then do, when I go back all the way through to my libraries and go to User Library, you'll begin to see the new library object created here. Okay, so let's just go through that process a few times with each one. Add to User Library. That's great. I could rename them, by the way, but they've got pretty sensible names already, so I'm happy with that. And it just becomes a really nice, quick little process. Add to user library. Uh, let's just do one more there as well. Okay, great. So let's we'll do the rest in a minute, but let's do a little bit of tidying up. So now what I really want to do is click plus to create a brand new folder. And then right-click, rename my folder. Let's just call this uh, plants. Um, yeah, I think potted plants is a good one for that. And we can basically, I've already got a plants folder, that's why. So let's right click and rename here. Let's just call this potted plants. Excellent. And I've got them all nicely numbered, my other library, so that's, that's not a bad thing to do. All we need to do then is just drag and drop those into that folder. And you'll see 
they'll be nicely organized for the future. So great, when I click into there, there they all are. So let's just sort of finish this off here. Um, this particular object is a planter, so we'll right click. Let's do add to user library. Um, you'll notice that it already added it directly in the folder. So that's a great little tip now to actually right click and add them directly into the correct folders as you do them. Now this is excellent. This means that um, even this actually, the living wall, let's do that as well. Let's add to user library. Brilliant. So you can see within just a few minutes, um, I've basically added all those into my Twin Motion user library. So it does mean that if I was starting, um, you know, a brand new project now, I can actually just drag and drop these objects in really, really seamlessly. And what's also nice is if you select a whole bunch of them, every single click you do is going to give you um, a random plant. So that makes it really, really rapid for you to sort of populate the area that you're looking for. That's getting a bit messy, so we're going to undo a few of those. I hope you've enjoyed that particular tip, and let's carry on by having a look at how we can directly supplement our models in Twin Motion as well. Um, if you are going to make some changes, that's really cool. That's a great idea. So if you want to sort of swap out some of the materials, for example, uh, before you kind of go in to create the user library, then go for it. Um, but what I really recommend there is you right click add to user library. So let's actually go and do this in the correct place. So remember to ideally set your folder first, right click, add to user library, and then it'll appear in that folder. So what's really nice about this workflow is now um, you can see I've got the original one. There's the original. And there is the new one with the, the much improved textures. Um, so yeah, make sure you do the work on the textures first before you update them. I mean, you can always delete them and do them again, but you can't edit them once they're in the user library themselves. Okay, so that's an important tip. Um, but what we're going to do now on this bit is we're actually going to just import a few natively just to show you how, you know, you don't have to go through Vectorworks. So if you're not a Vectorworks user, so I'm going to go to import, click open, and you'll notice that I've actually been downloading quite a few different types of plants here and having a little play around. So let's import this one. Um, although look at the file size, they're really big. So you've got to be a bit careful with these because they will add quite considerable amounts of file size. So I'd always look at the file size before you bring these things in. In fact, that one's quite small. So let's see if we can bring this one in. Um, we'll click OK. Um, again, keep the hierarchy as desirable, but it may be that that will add a bit more file size. Let's click on to uh, the bottom here and click F to find our little tree. Well, <laughs> a rather large tree actually, come in pretty big. So the models come in quite nicely. Um, it looks to me to be, maybe it is the right size, but maybe a little bit big for what I'm looking for here. So what you're gonna notice is if you want to uh, scale it, if you click here, you can't actually scale the object. When you click seven, you'll notice the scaling is grayed out at the moment. However, if you click onto the actual objects themselves, you can actually over here scale them both down. So if you type in say 50% and 50% in the Z direction, basically all of the aspects get scaled and that's quite a nice little tip. Uh, you don't really seem to need all these extra little folders. So another little tip would be just to delete those. So now you've really just got the whole thing contained in one place. So that's a bit much sort of neater bit of tidying up. I think if we zoom in here, um, there's also a bit of an issue with um, things like some of the textures. So they don't look great, some of these, you've got to be a bit careful. But all the same, it still may be that I'm happy to supplement my, my user library with this. So let's right click once again and add to user library. Now because we've got the plant selected, it will pop in there. And that's great because I can just drag it in and use it in the future. Okay, so let's just go through the process one more time and just import one more file. Just keep an eye on that file size. Let's go for keep hierarchy one more time and we'll fix the UV textures. We'll click OK and hopefully that will land in our model. Now, when it reads the data, if it takes a long, long time to do that, then basically um, that kind of gives you an indication that file is bigger. Okay, so you've got to be a bit, bit careful there. Now it looks like it's come in. Let's just click F to fit to it. Sorry, scroll down to the wrong one. Let's click F, there it is. That's good. So let's just sort of move it out into a little bit of space so we can actually see what we're dealing with. 
yeah there it is it's all come through quite nicely and this one interestingly enough I can scale so that's really interesting I'm not quite sure what the difference is there um, but it does look like for some reason that one's scalable and actually the quality of it has come through much nicer the textures are pretty good actually so you know I think with all these 3d models that come in from other libraries um, my tip is you've really got to just look at them and see if you're happy to use them um, before you bring them in and again there's quite a few sort of hold folder hierarchies here so let's just drag that up there and tidy this up a little bit don't need that folder there so it's all contained within the one object um, let's go to our user library one more time select our plants folder uh, right click and rename sorry let's rename yeah we'll rename actually just to get rid of the sketch up um, and let's right click and add to user library so then it'll appear in this folder um, these aren't really potted plants or <laughs> these are trees so the good thing is this is what you can do if you want to is you can do cut which will remove it from this library let's go down and make a new folder for trees right click rename let's call this tree library okay and what we do we basically go into that folder tree library and we can paste so that pastes the model in and it will have removed it from the other spot as well let's just do that one more time cut so that's a good little tip if you're just wondering how to move things around between different libraries yeah great excellent so um, this is really nice you know I can now sort of just drag and drop in from my libraries anytime I need to again there's a little bit of an indication that the file size is big here because when you click on it there's a little bit of a delay so just watch out for things like that whereas this one's pretty rapid um, because it just came in quite nicely I wonder if I can scale that one no I can't seem to scale that one at all um, unless I go into the objects themselves and actually scale them in here so let's do 50% uh, again I think it's already 50% let's do 25% 25 and 25 again just to scale down a slightly smaller version excellent everyone so i really hope you've enjoyed that little tutorial on creating twin motion libraries and this is a really really great way whether you're your vector its user or not to supplement those libraries and enjoy what you're doing in twin motion so please go ahead and put some comments in the channel i'd love to hear what your thoughts are um, but in my view this is the way forward with twin motion just to kind of boost up the libraries that you already have Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next video. Bye bye.